Scorpio singles, totally singles, completely singles. Welcome. Doing your singles read. Meet the soulmate. This is for the second half of October. And it's an always positive reading. Excuse me, I'm actually drinking milk. Mm. Kind of been a long day. Late here in Cancun. But I want to get these out uh, for today because Thursdays are always Libra Scorpio Day. With the heart spread for who's on your mind. And this one, a single spread. Also have the Soul Family Read. Check it out if you would. It's a daily read for whoever resonates. More about spirituality and romance. This will very specifically read the one that's right for you. So we're only asking spirit that. So if you see a three of swords or the tower, don't freak out. There are no ones breaking up with anyone in this reading. They're not perfect, but this is the one that spirit think is best for you to work with at this time. Three of wands. This is their energy um, in terms of emotions. Okay, I'm going to look at emotional energy with two cards. Also, there have the Page of Pentacles. The Three of Wands over the Page of Pentacles. And I'll come back to that. There I see the moon. Intellectual energy here. The Emperor. Wow. Aries much. Um, in the um, intellectual position above, uh, below is the subconscious position, emotional position, deeper positions. Um, page of Cups, Emperor over the Page of Cups. That's an interesting uh, combination and have the Page of Pentacles and the Page of Cups. Um, um, Sagittarius Moon and Aries Sun. But man, they are all kinds of uh, humble and uh, intellectually curious, just hungry and like genuine. Like, I could see them asking a question, like, that just kind of seemed so naive. I don't know, people might think something of it. I don't know, think they're, think that the person's being sarcastic or something, you know, because they uh, would ask, like, it's like a child. It's like there might be a way about them that's kind of like a child. And it's going to seem very odd because they're so much in control. I mean, if you look at the Emperor card here, how it looks, you know, a little snooty. Remember, this is your person. So, this is not a person that lacks confidence, you know. Um, but there's a way about them that's just childish. And I think it's just going to kind of come across as quirky and charming. But if people don't know them, just, I mean, like, like if they're in line at a store, I mean, they, they might give off a vibe that just other people don't really get. You know, that people just, well, they won't understand, like, their humor, or their innuendos, and they might, uh, it's not really meant to be sarcasm, but it might kind of come across that way, or, like, condescending, and totally not, it's kind of opposite of condescending. It's, like, basically, like, even though I'm this great person, I find great joy in you little people. I'm being kind of funny, but, you know, they really are interested in other people's lives. Uh, uh, all the little things that you would think uh, some of us may take for granted. You know, they probably stop and try to understand that. So they might ask somebody that's a clerk at a store, like, gee, what's it like to be a clerk here in this store and work at, at night all night? What's that like for you? And, you know, they just generally are asking a question. They might be a writer. We'll see. But this, uh, I'm, I'm a writer myself. I've always been a writer, even though I wouldn't say I'm a successful one. <laughs> um, but it gives you a certain mentality. We, I will ask these kind of questions myself sometimes, you know, here, um, Scorpios. Um, so if you, if this may come across to you, and you're even on your first date, even in your text, is something a little quirky. This is what's going on there. Um, their Sagittarius moon is well grounded. So it's in like an earth house. So, you know, second house, uh, sixth house, 10th house, uh, moon. And I think you could take that to the bank. So that's going to help. So you got an Aries sun, you've got the moon. Um, in terms of siblings, they're going to tell you a story about a special relationship. I don't know how many siblings they have. They might have two, so there might be three of them. But there's one of them. Uh, and I believe it's the sibling that's of the opposite sex or nothing ancestral, always positive read. 
Uh, they just were the one, maybe they're closer age, they're, uh, they're going to be in their sinistry, astrologer, <laughs> going to be in their sinistry. It's wonderful to look at that, and brothers, sisters, families. Uh, but they would feel in a special bond. Uh, if you watch This Is Us, uh, this is the brother and the sister. I can't think of their names. I've been watching it in a while. I'm going to just fork over the money to catch up on. I'm waiting for to get a few more seasons. But God, I love that show. But you know that bond that they have. A really heavy sister. Kevin is the dude. He's the movie star. And Becky? Um, something like that. It's not bad. It's just something they might... That story you might get out of them pretty quick. Certainly if you ask them. There's other little quirky aspects. Just something you might notice. No? Sexually, we've got the Ace of Pentacles. Yeah, I'll do reversals here. So, uh, top here. Intellectual... Aries, it's probably going to be a Taurus, Venus here. You've got the Ten of Wands. You've got an Aries, Mars. So their moon is well grounded. It's the Sagittarius moon's in a her Earth house. They have an Aries sun, and they have what's got to be here a Taurus, Venus where it's uh, exalted, I mean, it's heaven, so you could say it's like the perfect Venus. Um, it brings in the Venus energy of relationship and balance, and you know, look, it's a, the hands, it makes it a little bit like a yin-yang pe pinnacle here, uh, and in the sexual position. It's a little thing, I've dealt with this several times. Uh, as Venus and Scorpio, it's a little weird. This person probably is friends with every person they've ever been in a relationship with, you know, and maybe good friends. So uh, they're not typically someone that gives up easy on a relationship, um, particularly now with this Sag Moon being in an Earth house. And, you know, um, Aries, um, people tell you, men, er, men married, Aries many years. It's, they're not, they're not flitty. Um, you know, Aries' sun goes a lot of different ways. Um, Really, it's the Venus that's going to be how they love. Um, and with an Aries sun and a Taurus Venus, I mean, they're going to assign a, assign a value to you. And again, this is just what they do anyway. Um, I like it because probably what you're not going to hear is the stories about fucked up exes and Jerry Springer this and that type of nonsense with them. Um, the only thing that would get them in trouble is their Mars and Aries which is probably not well aspected here somehow. Um, and you'd think it'd be doing just great. So by not well aspected, it could be trying Jupiter, something like that. It wouldn't be something obvious um, where they can just, they would act too fast, and this would be sexually here. Um, but I think in general, there comes an energy with their Mars and their Sun um, where they could be that uh, Aries that's not that they act so fast, they act instinctively and they're almost always right. It's like, well, if you sit around doing your Virgo stuff for two days researching it, they've done it, they're on the way, done something else, something else, and by the time you do it, they've already done three other things. They probably did them all quite well, and you might be chagrined because you'd be like, how did you do it? You didn't spend any time researching that, and they'd be like, no, I didn't. I'm an Aries, you know, with Aries Mars. I don't spend a lot of time researching. I just go with my gut and, you know, uh, it probably works out. Um, so I could kind of see this getting them into some trouble with relationships. So a story they might tell uh, was just kind of um, getting in too fast and then having to pull back because I think with the Venus uh, in Taurus, another thing could be very sensual and be very sexual there. Uh, particularly if the other person does give them pleasure at Aries Mars, um, they could be very drawn to that. So they might go through a process where it takes them a minute to sort of detach that powerful sexual energy that they have developed and, and gauge it against this uh, Taurus Venus, which really does want the long run, though. You know, it's going to get a hold of itself and it's going to, you know, it's not going to really want to tolerate a lot of unhealthy patterns and codependencies and any of that kind of behavior not for long ace of swords ace of swords this is in their um 
core values and their lifestyle. Let's see what's under that, the six of pentacles. So I just got to show these together. Lifestyle core values. Um, this is a person that's in terms of work now and career and their philosophy about life. Um, I don't see a lot about the home here um, other than in terms of the, I like to look at the actual home life. You know, I think they would want to be kind of balanced in, in it. You know, they would make some kind of effort, like literally, like uh, you, they do the dishes sometimes and you do them at the other times. Um, but this is a person that they make no bones about how they feel. And I think they would end up being a person with this Aries energy that would very much do what they want. They may say to you, I do what I want to. I do what I want to. I do what I want to. And so they could be uh, self-employed. Um, that comes really strongly. Um, and they would be the kind of person, they could have multiple uh, businesses, uh, multiple uh, revenue streams. Um, and all the time, they're always doing just, just what they want. Like basically, if they don't want to do it, you know, and they don't do it. Remember, they're intellectually curious, very curious, very open-minded. So at a young age, imagine this person, a voracious uh, learner uh, in every way. Uh, they probably, if the emperor, you know, I guess they have uh, at least a bachelor's level education, maybe more. Um, this is the kind of person, exactly the kind of person, could have multiple uh, degrees and combine them in different ways. Um, is kind of following their passion and they come across uh, uh, the something uh, thermodynamics in uh, the uh, uh, oil industry and they get down that pipeline and they're an expert in that and the next thing you know they're over here and they're doing something else um, so they just could have this kind of mind um, that's kind of voracious and they really go for it and they do just what they want it's like so unique that if they told you their different things they've done, uh, you may not really be that familiar. Like, they're going to give you careers. You have to go, huh, never, never thought of that as a career. And even though there was such a thing, you know, they could literally, like, carve it out for themselves. Consultation comes to mind hugely here. But I think in terms of the home and the family, their children, keep this in mind because we have a Taurus Venus in terms of their past. This is not the person, if they're divorced, going to turn their back on their ex. If they're sick, going to turn their back on their ex. Uh, and definitely not on their children. And this is a person that's going to be involved and be connected and caring. But you got to keep in mind that they're going to be the same way about you, you know. Um, if the Venus and Taurus, it's like they don't, they, they don't feel like they have to stop and measure the love. They just can't. They don't go like... Well, I only got eight ounces of love, and I got the kids, and I got you, and I'm sorry, best friend whose mother just died. I don't have really time for you tonight because I only got this much love, and I got to give it to my family. They're going to give their love, okay? We're going to find a way. That's why it's so good there. That's why it's exalted there. It's the opposite of my Venus. Venus in Scorpio. It's unconditional love. Venus Scorpio is very conditional love, basically. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, so I think we have a pretty good picture of your person here. Sag Moon, Earth House, Aries Sun. We have a, we have a um, Mars in Aries. Um, maybe in a dip. I don't think these are conjunct, and I think the Mars is going to be clearly challenged with the square or an opposition to Pluto, to Uranus, to God forbid Saturn that kind of energy um, with this and their Taurus Venus it would stand out very strong and now it's get the feeling like if you just if you don't already know about Taurus Venus if you just kind of Google uh, YouTube hey what's it what's it, Taurus Venus like it's plenty of great astrologers they're going to tell you and by and large I think they'll, they'll meet most of those uh, descriptions so that might uh, be helpful to you more than anything you sort of know what an Aries uh, Mars is going to be like. Um, they're going to be very direct in, in their sexuality and kind of genital, you know. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, but they'll be able to stop and smell the roses, you know. Uh, but they, this is a person that probably in terms of sexuality, they're very passionate, you know. It's like you're going to be, your clothes are going to be off. Before the door closes behind you in the bedroom and you hit the bed, all of your clothes are off and you're already pregnant. That kind of energy. So... Let me know. Give me a like, you know.
tell a friend, tell a friend. Do appreciate it if you subscribe. Probably this doesn't read someone that's with you now. It's predictive read. Someone from the future most likely. So two weeks from now, do get back to me and say, dude, I just ran into this person and let me know. Thank you guys.